Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Well, this is going to wrap up my storage video series, I think. Um, I've been asked about some particular things in my craft room and how I store them. And one of the things that I've a been asked about on more than one occasion is my wire box that I've mentioned in my jewelry video. So what it is here, it's just this, um, this fish and tackle type box. Actually, it's, I'm thinking... It says Remax. I think that might be like the Harbor Freight brand, but look right here. You can see how I have my wire stored. Now, um, I have a bunch of these colored artistic wires here, and I have so many because they had a, it was two packages for a dollar at Martin's, and there were 12 spools in a package, so it was basically 24 spools for a dollar. And I stocked up because it's a, there, it's a great. Um, material to use with kids. I personally like using it on my own jewelry. It's just colored copper wire. Wonderful stuff and at that price I don't have to feel so stingy with it. So I did grab a bunch of that. You can see it's in a many of the little containers. Um, I also have copper wire, silver colored copper wire, gold colored copper wire, and copper colored copper wire. Um, and I picked a lot of that up actually at Consumer Crafts. They have a pretty cheap price on that and as I mentioned before I'm not affiliated with them but I do find myself shopping there quite a bit. Um, and then I have some little, some other craft store uh, silver colored wire, which I think it's, I think it's a, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's galvanized, maybe it's aluminum. I don't really care for it that much. So, I, but it does, you do get a really big spool of it. So it's great for projects where you're not really necessarily jewelry projects, but other craft projects where you don't have to worry so much about the quality of your wire. So this is my crafting wire and jewelry wire for the most part. Um, and I do have some, I mean, this, these also came with some wires, but they fit so well in these little boxes that they're just, I'm leaving it there because they work so well in those boxes. Now, this is my non-jewelry wire box. Like if I'm making bubble wands or maybe some like hanging jar, um, you know, lanterns or something like that, something where I'm not worried about the jewelry touching skin. Um, I have galvanized wires and aluminum wires. I like aluminum wires because it's easy to bend. It's easy to work with with kids. There's no lead in it. Um, you don't have to worry so much about them poking themselves. I also have some electrical wire in there, some like plastic coated electrical wire for different sculpture projects, mostly to do with kids. So this is my cheap um, wire to use for crafts and with kids. Another thing I got asked a lot about was my punch storage. And so my, my camera right now is sitting on my bench that I work at all the time. And um, I don't have a lot of punches but what I do is in these two, I have two of these bins from the dollar store. They're just the locker style bins and they fit in my, the um, little nine drawer cubbies from Target perfectly. There's just a little bit of room on the side. Sorry about that. I hate to jiggle you guys. Um, but I mean, it's just, they're just all pretty much just put in here. And I have another one right here. I don't use punches all that much, so I don't have a lot of them. So I just can rifle through when I need something. I tend to use my circles, you know, scallop circles the most. And I think I've used this on like every project for the past three years. I really like this punch. Um, I'm, I'm very fond of this one too. It's a little stamp, like a postage edge stamp punch. Um, and I've got some that I don't use that often, but you know, they're, 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 they're not bothering anybody. I could go through. I went through a couple years ago and gave away some that I never used. Um, but just punches aren't really, um, aren't really my thing. I don't use them a lot, so I don't have that many, but they're right here in these little dollar store locker bins. They're available at the Dollar Tree, and they still have them because we bought some for some other areas of our house uh, a couple weeks ago during another organization project that we had. All right, oh, another thing I get asked about are the purple bins over here. We're just going to do a little pan and scan action. There we go, purple bins. And why don't I zoom in a little bit? Okay, so those purple bins there, um, I've searched for them to see if I could find more because um, I've had a lot of people ask me about them. Let's see if I can move my lighting over here a little bit. Um, but I have not been able to find them. They were made by Crop and Style a few years ago. And some of them, I have a few that came in like one of those big Crop and Style totes. Now I just look like half of my face is completely dark and half of my face is glowing pale white. But sorry about that. Um, I, so what I have here is on this top, in this top thing, I have all of my handmade inks. I have a, a tutorial on how I made those. And then I have, um, I have more binding combs in this, but you really don't need a ton out at a time. So they're there so I can easily access them. 
Now I have a lot of UFO drawers and when I'm doing a project like if I'm uh, soldering or I am doing resin, I can only do resin in a very short window of time, uh, generally September in Maine where it's warm enough outside and it's dry enough that I can get my resin to cure properly because I like to use a polyester resin. And so I, I'll make a ton of embellishments and jewelry components and you know they'll be more than enough to last me for creating throughout the year so I just go to town I'll take like a week and I'll make tons of resin stuff in September on a really nice dry week uh, so I keep those UFOs in there otherwise I'll lose them and forget about them if I put them with my jewelry stash let's see I have some more UFOs I have some friendly plastic things just some little friendly plastic Pendants. I'm sorry, I have my camera set on the like kind of auto white balance so it's like white balancing on my face and everything looks super bright and blown out so I apologize. Um, I've got just a little, I've got some things that didn't quite turn out as I expected. My faux pewter hot glue embellishments, all these different little things that I've played with and made. I'm not quite, I don't really want to toss them but they're not really, they're not made into anything productive yet. They're in there junk drawer these are kind of, there are a lot of junk drawers here and I can't get that to fit back in oh there's a little clip on there for some reason and then I have all these plaster and again like at some other time I was using wood putty and plaster Paris and I made a bunch of sculpted things and I pretty much tell my kids I can go in the store and take whatever they want to use for their you know paint it use it for their collage or um or other art projects that they're working on so they know they can have free reign with that because it's so easy to just pour some more plaster or wood putty or whatever and make more. Which I think the, the Durham's Rock Hard Wood Putty is actually just, I think it's really just like plaster Paris. It's colored yellow. I'm very convinced. Uh, up here, I have a lot of my calligraphy supplies over here and I've just got my Bombay ink sitting on top of everything there because it does kind of fit. I love these vintage ink wells and I have a few of them that I've picked up at junk shops and I have all my uh, nibs in there for my dip pens. My dip pens are sitting on a shelf over there and a flower frog because they're pretty to look at and I, I like to have inspiring things around my work area. Um, I've got my Windsor Newton drawing inks which I actually kept in the um, original package and it seems like it's kind of glued down to something probably by some oh yes it was an ink spill apparently the bottom of my box is completely black but there's my Windsor and Newton drawing inks and then I have a variety of other inks here too that um that I can use for calligraphy or art journaling or whatever I feel like using it for at the moment and um I have more calligraphy things I've got more more calligraphy markers my uh kids like to use the pens that are all ready to go, the calligraphy pens, so I have my um, creative memories there, a few other just odds and ends, and these uh, magic rainbow brush calligraphy pens which are really awesome. I also have my wax seals for if I'm feeling fancy and I want a wax seal and envelope. I bought that um, for my wedding and um, I enjoyed it so I bought some extras. And my W seal for Wyrick that I did on all my cards, all my wedding invitations many many years ago and I also have some uh, some gold and burgundy sealing wax those are my colors or my wedding colors we had a medieval wedding it was quite lovely um, okay and then here I have um, calligraphy markers these are embossed emboss dual pens um, by Sukaniko and these are great I don't know if they still make these or not but these are all still really juicy and I bought them for 10 cents a piece at a yard sale probably about eight years ago so they're fantastic hopefully they still make them because they are just awesome and those are great if I just need to do like a title on a scrapbook page or I just want to do some fancy lettering on a card I just grab that and they're um they stay juicy long enough that I can actually put clear embossing powder over them and heat them and have an embossed image so that's what I really like about those pens I hope they're still I hope they're still being made I've got my decorative scissors there in that bucket and yes I still use them I don't throw away something just because it's kind of going out of style because it's nice to add a little shaped edge especially now that die cutting is so popular you could do that with your scissors and uh, I have other little cutting edges here this is from a Creatopia machine and I did not like the machine but I love these edgers and I just use it with a thick ruler and my little notch and die set from basic gray which doesn't get used that often but by golly I paid $17 for that thing and I'm keeping it because I will use it I do find things to use it for occasionally um I have some odds and ends here of stamps that I really that they're wooden they're mounted but they're too big they're too narrow to fit on my big stamp shelf but they're too wide to fit on my letterpress shelf so I've got some travel and some Asian characters here 
um, and some other little peg stamps. This isn't ideal, but and I got some Winnie the Pooh ones. A lot of these are just things I picked up at junk shops that I liked and kind of forgotten about, so I really ought to maybe unmount them and put them in my binder. And here I have another collage uh, junk drawer here. I have a lot of resin bottle caps that I was on a I got a little carried away. I was doing some experimentation the first time I used resin and I made all these bottle caps and I really don't know what I'm going to do with them, but there they are. And I've also got some little bottle cap toppers that I bought at a stamp show a couple years ago. And just, you know, leftover key rings from projects and uh, oh, some little knot hearts that I made. You know, just little things there. You know, I can use them for something. I made them. I'm not ready to toss them. So they're kind of my UFO drawers again. In my final UFO drawer, I have some uh, some slides that I have taped and ready to solder. I've got some pieces, yeah, a lot of stuff ready to solder. Again, some half done um, resin components, pendants that I haven't used for anything. Just a lot of kind of experimentations that can be turned into final pieces of jewelry. So that's what's in the purple, the purple drawers. I got asked a lot about those. So I wanted to make sure that I uh, did a video on that. And um, I did get asked about the general things that were in drawers throughout the room. So let me pause this and I'm gonna kind of take you around to the other things I didn't show you in my other storage video. So hold on a sec. Okay, now this is the um, the end of my table. Like I mentioned before, I took an old door and I put it on top of two of these um, nine cubby units from Target, and that's my main work table. And um, I showed you my punch drawers, but I'm gonna show you, I have this one bin, it's all twine and string. Not my baker's twine, but other twines. So I know where to find any jute or anything like that. It's right there. Um, this is kind of a junk drawer. I've got, you know, business cards, I've got, um, eye top accessories, golf tees, um, this is full of bottle caps, this is coffee can there, wine corks, coffee filters, um, odds and ends, googly eyes and sequins and things that um, kind of you get a lot of and I tend to use for like my basic crafting classes with kids are in there. This is my bead overstock and it's a lot of like plastic beads and cheaper beads that I would use with the kids um, that I'm not worried about wasting or anything. This is fun foam and veggie leather. And veggie leather is kind of, it's like a really thick fun foam that you heat up and you can stamp on and it looks kind of like leather. So this is all fun foams. And I also took some fun foam and added adhesive to it so I could make shaker cards. It's not pretty to look at, but I know exactly where it is. So as long as I know where it is, it can be hidden away. Shipping tags. This is pretty much all shipping tags and tin tie bags from Paper Mart. Um, I'm using tags all the time. So there they are. And I showed you this in my paper video. This is just all my small mini pads of paper are in this locker bin. And there's a few underneath it just kind of stacked up. Um, okay, so we're going to pause it again and we're going to go over to the scrapbooking drawers that are behind where I sit. And I've got some drawers in there to show you there. So there, 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 there. I keep saying there. <laughs> Let me just pause it before I say there again. Okay, here I, I showed you this in my yarn storage video. These are my totes over here. So then I've got short things of wrapping paper there. And there we can see the paper storage that I showed you in my scrapbooking video. And then I have all these really handy drawers and they're about four inches deep by 12 by 12 or by 14 by 14. So they're a really good size. So in here I have some die cut felt. I don't know if you remember a few years ago, this is all the rage. And um, my sister has a scrapbooking store and my mom got me a bunch of the different felts for Valentine's Day one year. And then um, I know I'm like spoiled rotten, aren't I? I mean, it's awful. Um, not awful, it's awesome. Uh, and then I've got this, um, this is from the Sunshine Shop. It's this like uh, kind of fabric, but it's made out of these like, uh, it looks like rhinestones, but it's actually like a plastic mesh. It's very, very cool. And I have that right there because I would kind of use it similarly on scrapbook layouts. And here I have some of my glass bead making supplies. So I have my leather apron so that I don't, you know, burn myself if a piece of glass is shocky and comes back and hits me. I've got my really awesome, oh, you wanna see something cool? Are you my mummy? Are you my mummy? <laughs> okay, like two of you out there will get that reference. Uh, I've got pliers for picking up hot pieces of what? Uh, hot pieces of glass. And I've got my kiln blanket there, my fiber blanket for cooling the beads. And I also have a, a, a tube of both white and black um, glass rods because I like to work off those colors. So I got a, a full tube of each of those. And then in my bottom drawer here, 
and I'm just gonna just gonna tip it down so you can see. I have um, all of my glass rods here. They're mostly Davardi glass, and I like Davardi because they're very inexpensive. However, they are little. They can be a little shocky, so you have to be careful with them. Um, they're not quite as stable as a Fuseworks rods. I've got my mandrels here, and they still have some kiln wash on it, but I'm gonna have to wash those and re kiln wash them before I use them again. Um, here I have some. Uh, some shattered glass like for to use for in my fusing. I've got my torch here. My, my cans of map gas are up higher on a shelf with my extinguisher, but I've got my torch there that I hook onto my um, my gas cans. I've got tile nippers if I want to use. So sometimes I use my uh, stained glass remnants for bead making and I've got other you know mandrels and the little blocks to make your beads on the file and other you know just things that are handy to use when I'm glass bead making. And they're right there in that bottom drawer because they're really heavy. So if I if I pulled it out and I dropped it, at least the floor is right there, so I'm not gonna shatter all my stuff. All right, so coming over here, this is all chipboard. And um, I bought bulk packs of these chipboard things a few years ago when they were really popular. And I'm always going back for more chipboard letters and stickers and, and stuff. So that's all right in here. Sometimes I use my metal stamping tools on it to kind of give a cool, Get a cool texture. Um, I really like that. Here are all my cookie cutters that I don't use for food because I don't like to cook. So they're right here. I mean, every once in a while I might grab one and wash it really, really, really good and use it to like cut a sandwich into a funny shape. But that's about it. I'm not. I'm not cooking. That's used for clay, pretty much. And down here is just different tapes. I know it's silly to have a tape drawer, but you know, messy. I'm always in here for tape. I've got aluminum duct tape, like the aluminum stuff that's really awesome for embossing. And I've got, um, you know, drywall mesh, and I've got this dotty drywall mesh stuff. It's just, you know, stuff I use. And then these cool corners for masking things off. I also have a big crate that's just duct tape. Um, but that's not very interesting. I've got this big drawer of glitter and glitter glue. And then I also have another thing of glitter, paper mark glitter, because I need to keep that separate from my design team projects with them. And this junk drawer is all like packaging and like I see plastic packaging for things because I use it as disposable palettes. And that's basically what all this is. It's old plastic packaging to use as disposable palettes because why throw it away when you can get another use out of it and then not have to clean up after yourself. So love that. And I've got some funky black mold looks like on the bottom of that thing. Ew, gross. Um, let's see, what do we have for time left? Uh, we'll get a couple minutes. Um, now this is, this is, says resin, but you know, you can't believe everything you read. This is actually some of my stamping gear stuff, which I really need to get out more because I really enjoy using it. These are um, my junk drawer. I've shown you that before, I think. It's just like things I've started to make, but paper crafty. I have a lot of work in progress in junk drawers here, I'm noticing. And, um... I've got these tools like my bejeweler, tag maker, little hot marks, my wood burner hot marks thing is in there. Um, hammers, my making memory toolkits with your hammers and needles and things like that. And you know, just stuff that I really didn't have another category to put it in. And I've showed you the ribbon before, which are in the next kind of column stack of drawers over here. I think that pretty much does it. That pretty much shows you what I didn't show you in the other videos that you guys have asked about. Oh, one other thing. I want to show you the other end, the other bookcase end of my table. Hold on one sec. Okay, this is the other end of my table. And I've got another, obviously, one of these um, 9 by 9 or these 9 cube units. This cube here and this cube here. Can you see that right right there? Those are all magazines I've been published in. It's pretty much chocolate block full, but I keep a copy of every article from a print publication that I've been published in. I have envelopes in here, just like ones that I've made that I don't have plans for. Pastels, my pastels for teaching are here. These are just a little like tower of um, containers I made for storage, which I do have a uh, tutorial on my blog about that. Die cuts and things I've stamped out are in there, just in little folders. Um, spray adhesives and fixatives and stuff are in there, and my yes glue, other, you know, odds and ends. Over here I have card bases, and my little dirt devil vacuum cleaner is down there. So there you have it. What's left, what I've shown, I think I've shown you just about everything in my craft room. I hope you found this series um, helpful. It's, you know, you may have more than me, you may have less than me. It's okay, however much stuff you have, as long as you use it and, um, and you enjoy it. So I want to thank
thank you so much for joining me for the series. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting!